Okay, uh, so today I uh, just wanted to go over a few um, build pa paths, build paths, and just kind of like uh, future investments that I'll be doing for um, the sake of Aether, uh, no, not Aether Raids. Uh, most of those investments are already done, I just need a few things on defense, but uh, particularly, even though I hate playing it, um, Arena. Um, because, uh, like I said, I think I've, I've mentioned this before, I'd like to have, like, a relatively painless um, arena experience, and that's never really going to happen, considering arena is just, like, a ch huge dumpster fire, but, um, yeah, uh, it was actually kind of funny, because I actually got kind of baited into thinking that I would make it into uh, Tier 21 this week, because on Tuesday, I think on Tuesday, I, I went to go do arena, and I was in, um, I was up here in the, um, rank whatever. I was like, whoa. I mean, I don't think I'm going to stay there, but I was hoping I'd at least stay here, but I guess not. I got shoved down here immediately. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I can't really raise this score up. I don't have much more than, uh, let's go take a look here where I can find the team I used. These people, these are like the highest investment units I have, so it's as far as I could go. Um, a few things I'm missing, right, are going to be like, um, for one, uh, the the seasonal unit somewhere in here, right? I'll have a highly merged seasonal unit, uh, and I really don't feel like rotating them all out every so off every all the time. So I'm just gonna you know <laughs> stick with this, I guess. Uh, and then she was here; she was the bonus unit, obviously. She was actually a pretty relatively painless bonus unit this time around, just because like it was easier to uh, secure kills with her. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's like, you have to secure a kill with Sharina, and it's just like, that's a huge ask, because <laughs> she's so bad. Um, but uh, yeah, Sharina, like any of the any of the Asker trio, is just, it's so miserable doing that. Uh, but you know, gotta give it a try. But uh, yeah, so I just wanted to kind of talk about um, what are some future, like, things I'll be working on to, to get that, to get, to work towards that goal, and some that I might, I guess they're kind of like, suggestions for anyone else who wants to like take a look and be like oh that looks like something i'd want to invest in as well um and some of these are kind of obvious but or some of these are kind of unique to this to this account I'm, you know I'm not gonna expect anyone to go out there and, and and copy some of these but um yeah so let's come to, come over here and take a look at uh this here so let's put you away okay so you can see up here the three units so your arena core defense needs to have a legendary on there, but really it's like, I don't care enough. So I'm just gonna invest in three regular units, and then this is this fourth one, the reason it's invisible here. I wonder if you can see my mouse on uh, on that thing. I guess not. The, the, this fourth unit is always going to be like the bonus unit, because you always have to have the bonus unit. Um, but in terms of these other ones, I guess we can start with um, the one we it's kind of like already been done. Uh, is my... Summer Byleth, uh, yeah, I mean, there's not much else to say, uh, I plus 10 her, uh, first pay to win plus 10, uh, well, I, I, she's plus 9, you know, I'll plus 10 her eventually, that, oh, that was the other thing I needed to say, but I didn't, those of you who saw that other summoning video, I, I, I forgot to mention that I needed to summon, save orbs to summon one more Byleth, uh, but anyway, the point is, uh, I summoned for plus 10, she's got duo, this duo skill thing, which means it boosts, like, her, her stats during, uh, arena, um, her, yeah, her score for Arena, as well as she has, like, just a lot of premium stuff, so, like, this, uh, the, the Sun's Precursors thing, the, um, Ruptured Sky, the Attack Speed Push 4, and she can score pretty well, um, so this is kind of, uh, if I, if I pull the plus 10 of her, theoretically, then, uh, I'm gonna use her in as much as I can, so, <gasps> that's kind of why she's there, which, the other reason on top of that is also that she is the color the, the, the colorless. she's the red the red check here so she checks green she's she hits hard uh, she also gives out the dual skill of just free desperation and we're running a lot of speedsters here so we'll take a look at them there a uh, 52 speed is a lot more in aether in, in arena because uh, in aether raids on defense you basically have to consider the fact that she's going to be running around with like 47 speed because of like sabotages, chills, uh, bright shrines, dark shrines, and stuff like that, uh, Tamari, uh, what else, I don't know, just a bunch of like, you know, some people run, uh, actually I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen a, a, um, 
what's her name? What's that girl's name? Aversa on defense, be on offense before, which is kind of weird. Like, I use Aversa on offense all the time, for those of you who've, who've been there. Like, basically every team has a Aversa, or um, on the other side, on Astra, I have uh, Tamari, Tethys. But, yeah, I've never... I've, people, she, she's not, caught, not as popular as I thought she was, but anyway. Um, her speed is a little higher on... Um, in arena because you don't have to worry about those things um so yeah uh but yeah and just in general this this build is like nothing not not a whole lot can survive this no reds or greens can survive this blues i mean vector's always a problem uh funnily enough she's actually a pretty good counter to uh legendary Krom. uh because you know yeah i mean he can't counter attack he's not fast enough so you just hit him twice and he's got very low uh res and one of them is going to have the uh, Ruptured Sky, and he's got a huge attack stat, so you just kind of slam that into him. And I'm not sure you can always kill a plus 10 uh, Legendary Krom. I haven't tested uh, tested that out, but I've, I've fought against quite a few of them. And, you know, I'm, like, trying to figure out how to kill him, and then I just kind of, like, position Byleth. Like, with my other unit, trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do, because he's just a huge threat. Uh, but then I position Byleth in a way to see if, I, if she can take him out, and she can just, like, destroy him. So I was like, oh, okay, well, never mind. Um... Even if she doesn't outspeed people, you can still use the wind speed. You can with wind sweep. You can still use the um, the desperation uh, duo effect to give everybody else like you. Know, you can just hit them, double them anyway. If they have like a, uh, I don't know. Well, it's not just her. I guess the point is I wanted to make. You can give other people the uh, the double without uh, before they can counter attack. And usually that means that you can attack somebody without repercussions. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, this one's this one's kind of like specific to this account. Like not everybody can build this, so it's like kind of me just showing off something. Uh, I guess the, the the one replacement that I would make, like if if I didn't have her and we had to choose a free to play option that I would put here, would probably be something like a uh, where are you, um, Tharja. For those of you who know, I have a plus 10 Tharja, though unfortunately she's not like, she's not properly invested into. I don't have the skills, I don't have enough flowers to plus 15 her. So like, she's at like, with the flowers to me, it's usually like, you're either gonna plus 10 them, or max them, plus 15 in case of, in the case of infantry units, you're gonna max them, or you, you might as well not just put flowers into them at all, and just kinda save them so you can max them, cause the stats are so minimal that it's like, you either get them all at once or you don't, and it, they're not gonna make that much of a difference. Um, yeah, Tharjum is probably a good, um, Tharja's Hex is probably a good replacement for her if you're looking for a free-to-play option. Um, but she's gonna, you're gonna have to, like, go out of your way to get some serious, like, skills on her. So, uh, you could probably find a Ruptured Sky somewhere. Um, if not, what a free-to-play thing would be, like, a Dragon Fang. Right? Or, like... A Draconic Aura. Well, Draconic Aura is the three, the three charge one, uh, where Dragon Fang is the four charge one. Um, so it's up to you, depending on like how you feel, uh, which one is more beneficial most of the time. Um, but yeah, this is why this is why I kind of like don't have Tharja built because it's like she's kind of awkward to build. Like she's not that fast, so you can't really do that much with her. Um, the the main thing I want to do with her is just kind of get a, a, a brave Lysithia and give her. Um, uh, she has attack speed push four and then lull lull speed res. So inherit the inherit these two right off the bat from her. Uh, the special is kind of like I said, it's kind of awkward to position the special. It's like I'm not sure what to give her, especially if you're running heavy blade, right? Because if you're running heavy blade, it's like you hit someone and you have to kind of hope they counter you and not kill you on the one shot so that you can follow up with the Draconic Aura if it's, since it's a three, um, three special. Uh, of course you can just run the four special and then hit someone twice. If they, if they can't counter, hit someone twice and then you have a charge for the next person, but that doesn't help you win that fight. Um, and the reason you want to run Heavy Blade on her specifically and Dracon and the, the Dragon ones is because she's going to have a huge attack stat, right? For those of you who don't know, uh, Tharsis Hex gives her attack stat, um, every bonus you have on her, which if you run her with like something like, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Legendary Azura, that's fairly easy to do, right? Because her dance just gives her the bonuses to all her stats. 
Uh, so in addition to just being, you know, pretty stat heavy, right? She's also got uh, a huge amount of like attack stats. So four times six is uh, twenty-four. So fifty-nine. We can let's just round it up to sixty. Um, gets her up to uh, what? 80, 84. So basically, it's eighty-three, right? Because we we'll go back down to fifty-nine. So boost her up to eighty-three, uh, which is no joke. Um, there's not really anybody who can sustain that on top of the fact that she's also reducing their attack by four So heavy blade is basically guaranteed to go off every time um, And the the idea is She has hex here, so she drops her speed by four uh, And if you run the lull she drops her speed by another three So that's a guaranteed reduction of seven speed which basically kind of you can kind of imagine she has um, 57 speed um, here and then we add the additional attack speed push, so it boosts her up to 64 speed, theoretically, right? Um, and basically, thanks to the lull, she'll never, like, you don't have to worry about them having bonuses on themselves. Uh, of course, this is kind of the ideal scenario, so, like, you can't always count that you're going to have, like, you know, buffs, period. Which is kind of why you might want something like a, um, a rouse here, a rouse, like, attack speed or something. Right, to make sure you get at least some stats if you can't get your dancer close to her or something like that, right? Uh, and then you go, you got a, you got a pretty solid, like, replacement for Byleth. Now, the, the, one of the Bi Byleth, one of her strongest suits is not only just her speed and her ability to nuke, it is the fact that she can run the wind sweep and then just not have to worry about repercussions and, you know, take out something like a, um, a blue Krom, right? A legendary Krom, because she doesn't have to worry about him hitting her back, right? So... Um, she's probably gonna die to something like a blue crom if she doesn't one-shot him immediately um, Which is what, what's important to consider so Just find a red check, you know, just a, a good strong red unit um, It doesn't have to be a tome user. It could just be like a, a red, you know Red bow red uh, red sword something like that. Just a good red unit would be is a strong suggestion the one I had before her uh, before I had Byleth was um Roy, he wasn't very strong, and you can see why I struggle so much in uh, Aether, uh, regular arena. Uh, but you know, <laughs> Roy's my boy, so kind of you know I use him all the time. I used to use him back then; it was like a first plus ten. I kind of said this a, lot, a few times already, uh, but yeah. So that's that. Um, like I said, possible replacement could be Tharja. So let's move on to like another obvious, to basically the one obvious one. So basically everybody and their mother has plus 10 their Hana, specifically for Arena. Uh, so let's just kind of go over her build a little bit. So plus 10, plus 5 flowers. I actually have the flowers to plus 5 her. I just haven't yet because she's only at a plus 1 and I'm not going to be able to plus 10 her until after I've plus 10 my um, Brunya. And that's like, she's at a plus 8 right now and I don't have enough book, uh, not books, they're uh, grails. So you can imagine, you can see how long it's going to take to, to plus 10 Hana after that. So may as well save the feathers now. Maybe by the time I I, um, I can plus 10 Hana, I'll have another set of feathers that will, another set of flowers that will uh, help me plus 10 her. But until then, you know, for now, she's not flowered on my account. Um, but yeah, so let's kind of take a look at her. Uh, out of all these three units, I think I would probably give her the... the um, the summoner support because I mean you can give all you can give the three of these a summoner support but I also need the summoner support for um, Felicia for my AR uh, offense on Astra and then I need one for Norn uh, my AR offense on light uh, so it only leaves me one for one of these and out of all these three I'd probably choose Hana uh, she can use it the most she can use she uses all the stats unfortunately Byleth only only uses the um, only uses the attack and speed. She can't really make much use out of this. I mean, I guess some people can like like if she fights against a, a bike, she can kind of survive, and, and having more stats will will help that. Um, but I might, well, I might as well give it to someone who will make you know infinitely more use out of it. Um, yeah. So let's kind of go through. So Dex Wobber, I talked about Plagianax, and and my Hannah is primarily running Plagianax right now, just because. Well, I mean, for one, it looks a lot nicer than having to. Um, two brooms <laughs> when you whenever you look at her um her little sprite uh but the reason uh, i have dex wobber on her here for arena builds is because in arena having visible buffs is actually a lot more common especially like if you're running like a dragon team chances are they're probably going to be running um what's her name Faye. 
And Faye gives plus five to everything, as well as like you're worrying about things like uh, Mercurius is here around, um, rouses and all that stuff, and 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 joint uh, hones and joint drives and all that stuff. So those things are are more common on offense on arena because there's not like you can't prepare for them ahead of time. You can't just like I'm gonna run a uh, an Aversa and then you know panic everybody. And even if you could run or even if you do run Aversa, it's not guaranteed that they're all gonna be touching all the time on turn one because like things move around a lot easier and a lot stranger in arena. Um, and they're not just gonna sit there and wait for you to attack a lot of the time either, right? Uh, so yeah, that's something to consider. Is uh, Dex Wobber is a lot more useful in arena than it is in uh, AR. As well as like it's a lot safer because you can't guarantee you're gonna get a bunch of debuffs onto the enemy uh, using any other skill, using other other you know supporting skills. Especially not this team, right? This team doesn't have any visible uh, debuffs. So Dex Wobber it is for for uh, Ninja Hana. Um, the plus speed, of course, because you want to have her speed maxed out. Uh, the rally. So this is just here. You can replace this with anything that'll help her score better. But this is I have like three of this lying around in my barracks, so that's kind of why she has it. Um, let me, yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, noontime, obviously, to heal. You can, you can opt for something stronger that does more damage, so maybe just, like, a, a Moonbow or, or Ruptured Sky would be pretty good on her, but uh, I don't have an extra one, so she's, she's good with noontime, I think. Disencounter, kind of obvious, just, like, make it so that she fights against everybody. Uh, Spurn, I, like I mentioned last time, I pulled a Spurn, so I got pretty lucky on that. Uh, but Close Call, um... Repel 3, Close Call 3, Repel 3, and all those can can work just as well. Um, just that Spurn is kind of like the the, the, the the end game of damage reduction, because you also get like 5 true damage on your special whenever you trigger it. Uh, it's not a whole lot, but I mean, if it's between that and like, oh, I get to move a space away, or I get to push them a space away, it's like, <laughs> I'd rather go for the 5 damage. And it's not even always triggerable, because you have to be below 75% health, so it's like, it's just one of those things. Um, but yeah, so you want her, this is the reason you want her so much speed. She can actually, like, again, Legendary Krom isn't that big a deal, because she can actually fight a Legendary Krom, uh, with all her damage reduction from her Spurn, the fact that she's green to, into blue with your Dex Wobber dropping his attack by five. Um, yeah, so you can kind of take him out with her anyway. Um, but it's just nice to have more options, and Ninja Hana is actually just a really cool unit. Um, one of the few units I have in my barracks that can run the Spurn. I don't have a lot of like units as fast as she is that can take advantage of that Spurn, so just pretty cool. Uh, but yes, yeah, so this is kind of like, uh, and then obviously I, I get she, so mine has this because I took the distant counter from Legendary Selif, and he comes with uh, Joint Hone Defense, and I was like, well. May as well, you know what I mean? Um, so I just took that from him. Um, of course, you don't want her to be, like, touching people because Dex Wobber and, uh, obviously, your solo skill needs to be... She needs to be in solo mode. Uh, but it's easy enough just to give the buffs out to herself and someone else and then just kind of put her out there by herself and then bait units and then they just kind of die on her. And, you know, she has plus five defense from that, which is good because her defense is lower than her res. Um, but, yeah, so that's, that's kind of... That, that's what that is. Um... I gave her the attack speed solo uh, because she needs kill potential because she doesn't have a whole lot of it. I mean, she has 57 attack, which isn't, like, l low, but she doesn't have a special is the problem. So you kind of have to make up with it with just raw attack damage. So the fact that she has deck swab means she reduces their defense by 5, so basically she's at 62 attack. Uh, and then another 6 attack puts her up to 68 attack. So hopefully she can double people and, and not have to worry about being kind of without a special. And then, you know, theoretically, sometimes the five true damage might help. Um, yeah. So this is kind of, you know, Ninja Hana, um, a great unit for Aether, uh, or for not Aether, but for Arena. Uh, even if another unit comes out that scores better than her, I think I'm just going to keep her. I mean, I'm not the kind of person who's going to just jump from unit to unit chasing um, Arena score, because that's kind of dumb to me. And, like, I really, like, like I said, I really hate Arena, so I'm just kind of trying to find a way to make it painless, as painless as possible. Um, and, you know, Ninja Hana is a good, a good choice, because I like... Um, I like, I always liked Hana. I, I've wanted to, I wanted to make a plus tenor, but I couldn't justify it considering, for one, she's a red sword as regular. For two, she's not that strong. Um, she, she has like armor slaying on her weapon, which is like, okay. Uh, no, that's Obero, I think. I don't remember what she has on her weapon. But like, again, it's like, 
There was just no reason to build her, but now that we got like a, a, a cool, funner version of her, um, I'm really eager to, to get in there and, and start building her. Um, so lastly, we have the, the last investment. It's going to be Patrine, and Patrine is going to be the one that takes the longest because I need to wait for her GHB to come back, and I need to invest in her after I have invested into um, Brunya and after I've invested into Hana. Uh, so this is going to be like the, the most annoying part of this entire... Um, <laughs> the most annoying part of this entire... Uh, set of teams here, uh, this entire setup. Uh, but Patrine, so I went with, uh, so you got plus 10, plus 5. I, re I actually already have all the flowers into her, specifically, even though she's not plus 10 and she's not going to be plus 10 for a while. Uh, specifically because I don't have any cab units that need flowers. I actually have like 14 or 1200 flowers, uh, yellow flowers, because I don't have any cab units I care about. Like, the only ones who have them are her, uh, Regan, and uh, Veronica, that's it, those three, and those are the only three uh, cab units I, I care about. Um, so now I just have, I'm just stockpiling a bunch of uh, yellow flowers for no real reason whatsoever, um, which is kind of irritating, it's kind of whatever, you know, who cares, uh, but it is what it is. So I'm waiting for her GHB to come back so I can get more merges on her right now. She's at a plus two because I, I just have the two, the, the three copies that they gave us. So after that, it'll be a plus three, and then from then on, I can start merging um, more copies into her, and, and you know, we can go from there. Uh, so her build, her Flame Lance, for those of you who don't know what her Flame Lance does, her Flame Lance um, is beast effective for one, so that's pretty good. It's good to have effectiveness, So, which is kind of why I have Byleth, right? So Byleth with her Ruptured Sky gives her Dragon Effectiveness. It's not exactly Dragon Effectiveness in that way, but it doubles the the damage Ruptured Sky gives you if you're fighting against a dragon. So normally, it boosts your uh, your damage by 20% of their attack stat. Um, against dragons and beasts, it gives you 40%, so doubles that, that, that bonus there. Um, so thankfully she has um, beast effectiveness on her weapon. Now, is our beast gonna like take over the meta at some point? I, I kind of don't think so, but it's good to plan ahead, right? I mean, I feel like as time goes on, we can only get more beast units, right? And as we get more beast units, you know, they can only get stronger. Uh, so having to deal with them is, is something to keep in mind. And and for those of you who already know, I mean, you know, um, Canagus is already a huge... Well, not, not not a huge deal. He's not that hard to deal with, especially like... But again, Bylas kind of just solves so many problems already. But just having someone beast effective is pretty good. And especially Patrine can still... Um, Patrine can actually take out uh, Freya... Which is pretty interesting, though you're not gonna find a lot of Freyas on Arena, just because she's her home is basically um, Aether raids. Um, but if you do find a Freya or something like a Freya that may come out in the future, I mean, you know, you're covered with Patrine, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, but like I said, so she has beast effectiveness in her weapon, which is pretty cool. Uh, her weapon hits res if she's over 50%, right? So if she's over 50, she hits res. Um, and then on top of that, she reduces their speed and their res by five so basically it helps her double um helps her keep from getting doubled uh and then helps you deal more damage by reducing their res um this again this could be anything if you have one of these just give her one of those right or whatever you know these might be more common uh, attack defense or whatever if you have one just give it to her uh it'll help her score more uh ruptured sky she has ruptured sky and distant counter Primarily because I pulled a Byleth, the male Byleth, randomly off of something. I, like, I think it was like a daily or something. I just like pulled her, pulled him. Um, and I decided I was going to give her the Ruptured Sky so that she not only had even more beast effectiveness, but now she's also effective against dragons. So I have two people, like instead of having one dedicated Dragon Slayer, I have two people who can deal with dragons in, in different ways, right? And especially across two different colors, right? Because if you're if you if you run like Itsuki for some for example, Itsuki's a, a common choice. I ran Roy <laughs> for my uh, you know. Um, so I ran Roy, but like you can run something like Itsuki as a plus ten, and that's like I mean there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but like y you only have one color you can deal with, right? Because now you know you're red and you have to deal with you know green dragons and you know green dragons are easy, but then you got to deal with red dragons and and you got an even matchup there, and then you got to deal with blue dragons, which it's kind of a 50-50, especially now with Naui's Refine being as good as it is. It's like, you know, we'll see, you know. But uh, with having Byleth and Patrine together means that you have two color, you know, double coverage for dragons across two different colors. And no matter which one you run into, you should be able to deal with them pretty swiftly. Um, 
So yeah, that's kind of why I liked uh, the Ruptured Sky on her. Uh, Distant Counter is just here because, I mean, why not? Uh, yeah, I mean, theoretically, you kind of want her to be more aggressive, so you'd probably run something like a uh, maybe like a push or something like a you know, because she comes with attack speed push or attack defense push. She comes with one of the push skills three, and then you just inherit a four, and then you know go on from there. Um, but I feel like that's you know, if I'm getting Ruptured Sky, it's kind of a waste. Uh, not to already have the distant counter. Plus, distant counter scores pretty high anyway. Um, so yeah, plus she can fight. This way, she can fight against uh, like magical threats as well, like or not magical, like distant threats, right? So she can run in there, hit someone, fight them, and then she can also just tank a little bit. I mean, not too much considering her weapon goes away after um, fifty percent. Uh, but going back to what I had mentioned when she first came out, uh, and and a while after. Um, she kind of has theoretically adaptive damage, right? Because as long as she's over 50, she's hitting res. So you basically kill everybody who has uh, low res. And then you kind of just let her go below 50. I mean, you know, theoretically, she's assuming she doesn't die, right? But if you let her go be below 50, now she hits defense. And you can hit all the people who have low defense, right? So, you know, that's kind of the theory behind her a little bit. Uh, so I run the lull attack speed because it's the only lull you can run. Uh, like, you can run the other ones... But they're one of the they're reducing either defense or res, and you're never gonna like guarantee you're hitting one over the other, right? So, not to mention half of that lull becomes useless at 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 some point in the future, right? So, I'd rather run the lull attack speed so that you're always, no matter what, you're getting the the usage out of it, whether she's over fifty or under fifty. Um, Plus, it's just good to have more speed on her. So her flame lance reduces her speed by five, and then lull reduces her speed by three. So that's a total of eight reduction. Uh, and again, there's a lot of buffs are, are very common in uh, arena. So now you not only not only reduce their speed by eight, basically boosting her speed by eight, so she's at 56. But you make sure they can't get speed buffs, and then you know you can deal with them that way. So theoretically, she's at 56. Plus, I gave her the speed res solo. So she's at 62 speed, almost. Um, and the speed res solo is just to patch up her res because um, it's lower, basically. it, And it's kind of just... I just have it hanging around. No one else is really using it. Um, plus, it, it looks better aesthetically, in your mind anyway. Like, right here, it's 35 and 29, but in your brain, you know it's 35 and 35. Uh, so it's, it, you know, just nice. It's just... <laughs> they match. Um, there goes my... Uh, debilitating desire to make sure that the the stats match all the time um but yeah i mean that that's kind of it um and then these blessings just kind of change depending on you know if you're running like like fjorm is here so she gets more speed on water seasons because i have fjorm as my bonus unit or whatever and that's you know that's pretty good because then like i give her a water blessing and then you know drop fjorm in there and you know there you go she's 57 speed uh plus the this is 57 is uh, 63 speed so pretty cool um but yeah i mean other than that again like i leave stuff open because it's like not that big a deal like what was she gonna have in her in her deep in her c slot it doesn't really matter uh yeah none of this stuff is really too uh yeah none of this stuff just matters too much um the only one that does kind of matter, like her i have her built filled filled in just because it's kind of you know it's already there but um for arena if you really want to get the most out of her, you really want to give her a, uh, I don't know how to spell rain. Um, you really want to give her a speed res rain. And there you go. That's your perfect arena build. And then maybe, you know, well, you'll probably put Swift Sparrow here instead. You're losing one, which isn't too bad. And there you go. That way she's, you don't have to worry about her touching another unit or something like that, uh, having to be adjacent. Uh, and there you go. This is your perfect arena build for her. Uh, problem is, the only person who has speed res rain is Triandra, and I'm not gonna go fodder her off. Wait. No, I think there might be another one. I'm not entirely sure, though. Um, but I'm not gonna go fodder her off for that. It's just kind of overkill. Um, but, you know, like they say, in Arena, there's no such thing as overkill. There's either kill or kill, and that's it. <laughs> like, there is no such thing as overkill, because you either kill them or you lose, and, you know, you really don't want to lose. Uh, I'd have to start your Arena run all over again, so... Um, yeah, I mean, if I were to make any suggestions, if you were for some reason uh, crazy enough to pull a plus 10 Byleth like I am, and you're not like a whale, <laughs> the same way I'm not a whale, um, then, you know, this is, if you want to go further, this is where you go. You go for the speed res range, so you can reduce their speed by 4, uh, meaning that, you know, 
your your sun's procrustors goes off easier, uh, and then you know you know just double everybody. You don't have to worry about it, and your wind sweep is always gonna. You, you want to make sure your wind sweep is always active. So, if we're looking at this here, she's got 52 speed plus her weapon is five more, is 57. Uh, plus the attack speed push four is uh, 64. Plus the speed res rain is 58. 64, 68. Uh, plus the Swift Sparrow is uh, 72 speed, so she has 72 speed. Uh, too bad we can't inherit Sirius from, uh, <laughs> from, what's her name? Uh, I hate blanking like this. Sothis, there we go. Too bad we can't inherit Soth uh, Sirius from Sothis, that way we could just heal non-stop and then uh, <laughs> make use of that giant speed stat. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, that's fine regardless. Uh, but yeah, so these are these are the these are the in, the units I'll be investing in. Like I said, I mean, I might find a uh, I might go get uh, speed res rain if it comes out on someone else. I think I think it actually I think that I think I'm wrong. Yeah, I think this is available on someone else. I just I can't remember who has it. Um, but yeah, so I might eventually feed her one and this. But the problem is that like she's already kind of perfectly built this way for. Um, for uh, the, what's it called Aether Raid's defense and I really don't feel like slopping her build every time I go to use her in arena um, so you know it doesn't really hurt too much to have her like this anyway um, this is kind of why I want to build these two because I want to have them dedicated just to arena and not have to worry about anything else um, yeah so um, yeah I mean that's, all, that's about it uh, in terms of like Fighting like you also want to keep in mind. I guess I can kind of point out how these these te both these teams deal with um, certain a lot like a lot of common threats. So a lot of common threats in uh, arena are going to be uh, for one they're going to be uh, dragons. Like they're not like dragons aren't the hardest to deal with out of all the all of the threats, but they they are very common. Like building a um, a small arena based dragon team that scores very highly for your defensive arena team. Uh, it's pretty common, so you, you see them a lot. So you, as a player, have to kind of figure out how to deal with that. Uh, Hana is just a very good um, unit in general. Uh, so she can fight a lot of threats. So she's not really here to stop anything specific. Uh, but that's kind of why Byleth and Petrine are here. They, they both have, like I said, theoretically dragon effectiveness with their ruptured skies. Um, and Petrine is just kind of backup because Byleth is really just going to run in and just like kill everything by herself. And whatever she can't kill... Um, Theoretically, Hana and, and Petrine can kind of clean up afterwards. Um, so one of the more threatening dragons that you find on defense are, like, especially, like like I said, if Byleth is your main carry, one of the more threatening dragons you're going to find on defense is going to be, um, like, Tiki, right? Young Tiki? No, not Young Tiki. The There's a lot of Young Tikis. <laughs> there's a lot of Tikis in general, I guess. Um, but it's going to be that um, blue tank Tiki. Now... She's not that strong, but she was kind of like a lot of people run her just because she has she had high BST back then, but she's kind of like fallen off that like pedestal now. But she, there's still a lot of them roaming around, and like her and Naui and um, just a few other ones are, are kind of hard, hard to deal with. Like Naui specifically gets kind of hard because with Naui, you can run Dragon's Ire on her, and then you can't like deny her. Oh no, yeah, it gives her a follow up, and you can't deny her follow up, but Fortunately, um, Byleth doesn't just deny follow-ups, she denies the counter-attack, so uh, Dragon's Ire doesn't do anything uh, against Byleth, like, she can just double them and get out. The problem is, Tiki's actually quite strong, and, and especially, like, if she's running um, Dragon Wall now, uh, she's not going to take any damage from Byleth, so I have to, you have to kind of think of something else to use, uh, and then that's when Pertrine comes in, because she doesn't have to worry about being negatively affected by the, the weapon effectiveness. Um, and she can kind of go in and just fight her one-on-one. -on -one. And if that doesn't, if like, if it looks like you can't do that, then just sit there and let, um, Hannah tank her. And then she might, she'll probably be able to beat her. Cause now we is like these two, like swapping from her to her is like, okay, we can't beat her on the player phase, but now weakest phase is enemy phase. So if you let now attack into you, you don't have to worry too much. Cause she just like. She doesn't do very much. She just kind of sits there, hits you once, and then just kind of goes on with her life. Um, 
so yeah that's kind of that's what that's what that's about uh, but yeah, so that's one of the bigger threats. Nowies are just constantly roaming around, and you really need to have something to deal with her because if she catches you out, you're gonna die. Um, and you know, like I said, having having a dragon effectiveness person like uh, Itsuki or Roy in my case isn't always isn't always like you're not always gonna win that matchup just because you have dragon effectiveness. Um, you're not always gonna lose it, but it's you know why take the gamble? Just have you know as much coverage as possible. Um, additionally, so one of the other threats, and I already mentioned him and how sort of a non-issue he is, is Legendary Krom. And he only comes out in water season, but sometimes people just leave him on all their defenses because he's really hard to deal with. Um, but yeah, I mean, as you can see here, I mean, Krom is like not something we really have to deal with very much. Like, even my, even the person who's weak into Krom, which is uh, Byleth because she's red, just like destroys Krom, so it's not that big a deal. Uh, in terms of like, normally you, you'd want to have like a tank effectiveness unit on your team, but the thing is, Byleth is so overwhelmingly strong as a carry that you don't have to worry about not running a tank destroyer because she destroys tanks. Um, Wary Fighter is one of the bigger problems you end up fighting against, like a tank, is because like you have to fight into that and then get out of the way because he's going to retaliate next turn and destroy you because you couldn't double him. Um... But Byleth doesn't have to worry about that because she can't her her follow-ups can't be denied, and you just stop them from countering. So something like Surter, which is normally a big deal, uh, even for like a you know a good um, a good red unit, any you know regular good red units, Surter who's normally a huge deal, you can just snipe him with Byleth before he's even a problem, right? Because she just two shots him and you, you move on with your life, right? So you know Surter and any other tank. In the game doesn't really have a chance so like i said canagus um is a popular unit uh what else who else is good i mean there's a lot of effies right a lot a lot of gwendolyn's a lot of a lot of those up there at the top from just kind of like side investments people have made um like black knights and zelgiuses and stuff like that like those like none of those like there's no tank in this game that really stands up to to buy list. like even blue tanks like like i said even blue tanks like uh, like the, the the what's her name, the Tiki, the young Tiki. Now, conversely, there is one blue tank that is uh, extremely hard to deal with that I'm sure we all know of already is Bector. As soon as I said you know she doesn't have problem with blue tanks, um, I'm sure Bector came to your mind because he comes to my mind as well. In fact, he lives there rent free, uh, causing me to wake up in the middle of the night with uh, cold sweats and just you know <laughs> serious nightmares. Um. So how does this team fare against a um, a, a plus ten vector? I've never actually, funnily enough, I've never actually fought a, a plus ten vector, which kind of bothers me because he's already such a huge menace, and I've never fought a plus ten one. Like, can you imagine how bad it's going to be when I do find a plus ten one? Um, but yeah, basically, Byleth doesn't do that good against him but she does decent damage and if you can like go in there hit him a few times basically just hit and run is the idea is you're gonna hit him with Byleth get out of there come back hit him again and, and, and back and forth and back and forth right that's kind of all you can really hope to do um, you can leave Ninja Hana there to bait him because again Bector's hardest uh, hardest like Bector at his worst is going to be uh, during his phase, so if he decides to attack into somebody, um, and that's when you leave Hana there, because Hana should theoretically be able to um, to deal with him, because not only is she uh, triangle effective against him, uh, she is also uh, she's also got spurn. So hopefully you can tank him and deal enough damage over time to kill him. Uh, but yeah, so additionally. Uh, that's one of the good things about Patrine is that at least Patrine can like she's green she's blue to blue right so she's not effective against him but she's blue to blue and she can hit his res stat which is very important and her highest stat out of both of them is her uh, her defense stat as well as having the ability to reduce his attack by three uh, so there you go the ruptured sky also helps is very strong against him because he has a huge attack stat you just got to make sure you can survive getting hit at least once if you're going on the player phase if you're gonna attack him uh, but yeah so you don't have any like 100% like this is gonna kill Vector every single time you run into him the same way you have for a lot of other threats uh, but you have decent help nonetheless right 
Especially because, like, Byleth... So you can, like... You can use Byleth's duo skill and then let her and Patrine both just, like, slam into him. So you can let her first, and then Patrine gets to double him for free. Uh, and then kind of hopefully, you know, do, do something from there. And, you know... Like I said, it's, uh, it's kind of a... A crapshoot, especially because he can deny follow-up, so, you know, Patrine is only going to hit him once. So basically it doesn't do anything for Patrine, as I just realized. Um, but still, it's like, like I said, you can you can handle Bector, but it's going to take some thought. You, you can't just like, oh, I have the perfect counter for Bector built into this team, and that's because there really isn't a perfect counter to Bector other than, like, running windsweep units, like, green windsweep units. Um, or green, or, like, just green units with fire sweep weapons, it's like... At that point, I mean, who, what who what doesn't that counter, right? Is not being able to counterattack. So, um, which is kind of why we have Byleth here, because <laughs> she counters everything. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of you know that's kind of what that is. It's, you know, it's, it's as good as we can as we can get, I guess, is basically the point. Um, what other what are some other units? Um, he's not as common because you can't position him properly. But you know, sometimes you'll find plus ten uh, bikes. Uh, Especially now, I think you're gonna find more plus ten bikes that, for some reason, uh, <laughs> for some reason, um, they decided to give him a refine. And I actually have a meme for that. Hold on, I'm gonna go find it, and I'm gonna be right back. Okay, yeah, this is the meme I was talking about. Uh, <laughs> this guy right here in the front is basically bike, and then like every other unit that could use a refine is back there just drowning. Um, <laughs> Steve is drowning. And that this is me right here, just like literally any other unit but bike would have been just fantastic, but no, we had to give bike not only one of the craziest refines ever, but we have to now give him another um a resplendent ult. Fantastic. Um yeah, I don't know, it just it's it's it bothers me because that was supposed to be like the the resplendent refines were supposed to be for like units that aren't really relevant that could use a boost and like a stat boost that could help them out but unfortunately uh not and of course you already know who like I, that when i said that picture it was like oh every other unit that could use a refine but for those of you who've been on this channel long enough you know exactly what unit that is back there that i in my mind is back there and that's basically camilla um yeah like especially because like it had to be a green axe right so next week uh next Next Resplendent Refine is not going to be a Green Axe, and, you know, it's not going to be a Green Axe for a while. Uh, so yeah, I just, I can't wait to, like, just get, like, the, the Bector, you know, Resplendent Refine, you know what I mean? Like, that, that's what I'm waiting for, just, you know, just give it to him. I mean, if you're giving it out to Bike, you know, <laughs> why not, right? Uh, I don't know, it's just irritating. But anyway, let's get back to what we're talking about. But yeah, so, like I said... The chances of finding vectors are gonna start uh, going up a little bit, um, and like I said, if you're running, if you find a good vector, they're running um, null C disrupt, so you know wind sleep doesn't work on him, nor does her uh, desperation like duo effect work on him either. So you're kind of like <laughs> uh, you're just gonna hit him twice, and hopefully he doesn't kill you on the backswing. Um, but that's kind of a hard ask. Uh, on the other hand, you could just leave Hana there to bait him, and then, you know, again, Bike's worst, like, Bike's at, Bike's at his worst when he's, like, having to do stuff, when he attacks into people. So you can just sit there and let her tank him, and she, he just, like, kills himself on her, and that's basically all you have to do for, for Bector. Um, or for Bike, I mean. Bector might also be, like, she might also be the solution for that, too. Um... But yeah, I mean, like, like I said, there's just not, like, with this team, there's not a whole lot of sweating um, going on about, like, oh, I might find this matchup or that matchup. It's like, you've got one for every matchup. And for Dragons, uh, you got two people, double coverage, kind of, like, taking care of that regardless. Um, yeah, fortunately, like, like even with, like, if you're running Naoi with a Dragon Wall, even that's not that big a deal because you've got 35 res and you reduce her res by 5 and now he doesn't exactly have the highest res stat. Um, yeah, so even then it's pretty... You're alright, right? You're alright. Um, but yeah, I mean, like other than that, that's basically it. That was the main video I wanted to say today was like... 
um, talking about my arena core, my core arena team um, going forward, and what I want to, what my plans are, as well as like um, giving some suggestions of what I think would be a pretty good investment going forward. Um, now, like I said, Ninja Han is kind of obvious because everybody and their mothers already invested into her, and they already like a lot of people already have their uh, plus ten Hanas, but I'm kind of behind the curve because I'm busy plus tening um, Brunya. Um, and Patrine as well, like, like there's not a whole lot of people talking about Patrine because like, beasts aren't very important right now. They're not, they're not too hard to deal with. But Patrine not only has beast effectiveness, she also has a very good um, BST for a cav unit. Um, so that's kind of my point. Is like I want to have at like not only do you want to have the three elemental coverages, you also kind of want to have one of all of them, right? So you want to have a flyer. You want to have a, a infantry unit, and then you kind of want to have a a, a a cab unit as well, right? You just you just want to have diversity on your arena team, just to make sure, no matter what you're running into, it's like you got a lot of things covered, right? Um, so yeah, yeah, that's basically it. So hopefully, uh, some of you could glean something from this, and uh, hopefully, I could convince some of you to maybe invest in Patrine. Uh, Patrine, I actually, I mean, you know, like I said, she's one of my favorite units that have come out. Um, one of the only cab units like Veronica I like Veronica but I, I, I like how strong Veronica is, is if you understand what I mean like I don't necessarily like if Veronica wasn't as strong as she was I probably wouldn't have invested into her is, is my point um, and similarly with Regan Regan is just very strong and she's also a um, AR offense unit that actually does something right so you can go in there snipe a unit run away and then leave an opening for my, you know, Felicia to go in there and, and, and deal with all the units that maybe she couldn't deal with before, you know, she had sniped one, right? Um, so yeah, that's kind of the point there, is that I don't have, there weren't a whole lot of other cab units that I really cared about until Patrine came out, and now Patrine is out, it's like, oh, you know, good, I'm, I'm happy I have a unit that I can invest into. Um, unfortunately, now the other unit is, after I saw Acris's video, it wasn't necessarily because she can fight it wasn't necessarily because she can fight against um, what's her name, uh, Freya, because th that was kind of the point of that video was that she could take on Freya. But I've always like wanted to make her, but I've never had like the time or resources to. But now I'm at the point where like I've got uh, most of my investments just handled, um, and I really want to make a. Um, let's see, what does she have? I don't know what her what her main thing is. I really wanted to make a. Uh, the Ursula build and you know she might be due for a fine at some point because I mean look at that head like she looks nice I like the way she looks I mean don't get me wrong uh, but so, something about this the, like the, the the art style of the head is kind of off to me it just looks odd because like if we compare her to Brunya let's go look at Brunya here now I'm kind of tangential again but if we compare her to Brunya like she, there's a lot more clean aesthetic going on here I don't know it just seems nicer there's just something weird about Brunya's like art style, the way it's drawn. Like it looks cut off up here at the. Um, I don't know if you can see the mouth. You probably can't because I, I turned that off. But over at the top, like if you look at her, the top of her head to the left a little bit, it just kind of looks like cut out. Like some, somebody, like they, they did a cardboard cutout of her and then they taped her to the back of this like the background. I don't know. It just looks odd. Um, but as you can see, Ursula is kind of like in need of a, a serious refine because like these stats are pretty pitiful. Like 41 speed after a speed. Boon. That's just sad. After plus like ten to everything. Um yeah. So I mean ideally she's supposed to one shot people is kind of what the idea is. because uh, it turns their penalties against them and her blue crotone gives her cav effectiveness, which is like Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's just like she's not very good, is what I'm saying. Um the only thing that is kind of the saving grace of her is she has is is in fact this refine, because this refine is a broadleaf fan effect. Uh for a blue mage cab unit, which is pretty good because that means you have a broadleaf fan on a unit that can move three spaces, which is pretty ridiculous. Um Yeah. And she's you know, like I said, she's she's fairly low investment. You could probably, you know, like I said, she's not supposed to outspeed people, so you don't really need to worry about giving her that, and then just worry about like one shotting somebody. Um, yeah, like making sure they have enough debuffs to get one shot, especially against blue against calves, right? Because she has cav effectiveness. Um, but yeah, so that's another blue unit that I wanted to make, but um, another blue another blue cav unit that I wanted to make, but Patrine went out in the end because she has more application. I feel because, um, like I said, 
How, part of the reason you run her was to deal with Freya in that video that, that Akris mentioned. I mean, she could deal with other units too, but she really is very weak against anything that isn't like a cav unit. Like, you can see how pitiful her stats were there. Um, but I do think Patrine has a lot more uh, value because she's not cav effective, but she's beast effective, which means she does take care of uh, Freya, but she also takes care of a lot of other things as well. Uh, is she good for... Is she good for uh, uh, AR defense the same way um, Ursula is? No, because Ursula has three range movement with a two range weapon. Uh, and having a, a three range movement horse without the two range movement weapon kind of defeats the purpose of running the cav line. Uh, so Patrine isn't very good for a cav line is what my point is. But Patrine is good at basically everything that isn't that. Where Ursula is really only just valuable there. I mean, you know, you can use her in anything, right? You can use Ursula wherever you want. Um, and she'll be decent there, but, you know, basically that's kind of like the main focus of her, is to be that check on defense there. Um, but yeah, like I said, like I said uh, just kind of, she came out, she was one of my favorite units. Um, Hannah is just kind of a no-brainer. Uh, and then Patrine is like the only one that's like, you'd probably have to convince someone um, that she's a good choice. And uh, I think she's a good choice, so I'm going to use her. Um, and like I said, if you don't have, if you don't have Byleth, you can go with Tharja as a good um, red nuker. Like, the thing about Tharja is she can actually just take down a, um, like, properly buffed. She can just take down a, a, a bike in a one-shot, maybe. Like, if you if you charge her special on someone else, and you go to bike, and then you just, like, you just hit him, you can probably just one-shot him, like, honestly. Um, but, yeah. You'd also have to kind of consider your team again at that point, because then at that point, you really need uh, to make sure she has other buffs. So you'd probably have to run a dancer or something to give her other buffs. Uh, but the other thing I like about these is they're all kind of self-sufficient in a lot of ways. They they do what they do really well, and if they can't do something, you, I've got someone else to cover for them. Where, where she could probably wipe out an entire team by herself, uh, but you do need support around her to make sure she has enough buffs. You need to be able to like dance her, maybe give her some special cooldown or something like that. Um, but yeah, so uh, like I said, she can take out most things, and what she can't take out, these two can handle. Uh, what she can't take out, she can handle. What she can't take out, she could probably handle, right? So, it's kind of what it is. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully I went through and, and, you know, if you have any, like, other tough matchups that you, you can't immediately see that this team beats, I don't know, I guess just leave them in the comments and maybe we can kind of talk about, um, you know, what what I'd have to do to change these units. Like, what could I inherit anything on these units that could help me deal with those units? Or you deal with those units in the future? Um, or... Is there just like a glaring weakness that this team does not um, properly pick up on that we're just going to get smashed when we find it? Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, if, if, if there's anything... Because basically, I've never been in Tier 21 of Arena. I've always been in Tier 20 and Tier 19. And these are the common threats that I find, right? But maybe there's threats up there in Tier 21 that uh, you guys are more familiar with that I haven't really fought a lot of um, that might come up every so often that I haven't calculated, right? So like I said, these, these are... The, these three units are chosen and, and, you know, built off of my experience. And my experience is only tier 20 and tier 19. Um, what common threats are there? Um, I know. <laughs> what, what's like the most irritating to me, basically, is what that comes down to. Because there's a lot of um, really annoying stuff you find on, <laughs> on Arena. Uh, but yeah, so that, that'll be it. That was just it. just kind of explaining um, my Arena core, um, what I want it to be, what it'll be going forward. Uh, hopefully one day I'll be able to hit tier 21 with these three. Um, if not, you know no worries um arena's not that you know just don't sweat it is what the ultimate uh, point of that all is uh so yeah that'll be that uh see you guys in the next video probably probably this time it is going to be the epic 7 video but i'm not entirely sure